welcome to Cyber Focus, your source for international business information. My name is Sarah Ko, and our guest today is Ms. Makara O'Connell. Now, Makara is a senior majoring in apparel merchandising and French with a minor in business here at Indiana University. She also co-leads the campus's Fair Trade University campaign, which is a national organization that spearheads a grassroots movement to grow the fair trade trend in various communities around the U.S. She's one of the top five finalists of the National Retail Federation's 2016 Next Generation Scholarship as well. Now, she might have started her college career with the focus on fashion and the retail industry, but with few months left of her graduation, Makara now sees and understands the importance of private sector's crucial role to alleviate global poverty and achieve gender equality. So today, Makara will share with us her story and motivations behind her active involvement in the fair trade movement. Makara, thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, great to be here. <laughs> well, I introduced you a little bit in our intro, but I would love to hear a little bit more about you, mm -hmm. from you. Um, and before we move forward, I guess I should have congr uh, congratulate you for being one of the top winners uh, for the Next Generation Scholarship. Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, Very so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I won the scholarship, well I won the, I was in the top five finalists for the scholarship in January and we got to go to the, go to the National Retail Federation Gala in New York. Mm -hmm. So that was really special because we were able to meet with certain retail executives as well as um, ones that I really admire who work in corporate social responsibility and it was really cool to be in that room full of people who I sort of aspire to be one day. Mm -hmm. and. Um, along with that, it was just neat to meet other students who sort of have the same passion for retail that I do. Wonderful. Um, so we talked a little bit about fair trade, um, and you obviously very much involved in the whole process. So fair trade mm -hmm. movement isn't actually a new trend, right? Um, but interestingly, not a whole lot of people are completely um, aware of this new uh, this business method and the objectives and the goals through fair trade. So what have your involvement been, and could you maybe expand a little bit more on the participation in trying to promote this on, uh, on your own terms? Sure. So I was asked to lead the Fair Trade University campaign by my professor, Mary Embry, in the apparel merchandising department. And so I now co-lead the campaign with um, Lauren Roberts, one of my friends. And so we basically have expanded the campaign to also focus on other socially responsible purchasing habits. So that means buying local, organic, and so on and so forth. And so we work with a small team, really tight-knit, which is fun, and we basically do a lot of tabling events to promote the idea of fair trade to students on campus, as well as to help bring in product to campus, such as food or apparel that is socially responsible. Very interesting. Um, so you are an apparel merchandising major, and like I mentioned before, you're very much um, interested in the fashion industry and the retail industry. and. The fact is the real retail industry um, doesn't really have the best track record uh, <laughs> when um, contributing to sustainable uh, work patterns or work, um, you know, working environments. I mean, child labor issues, um, very low wages, and so forth. Right. Um, so from your experience, I mean, you've studied it and you've had some exposure to fair trade movement and fair trade initiatives. From your perspective and in your opinion, what do you think these private companies can do in order to contribute to uh, more positive impacts in global economy and society? Yeah, I think that's a big question and it's an interesting one because a lot of big retailers are now, you know, such as Targets or Walmarts or companies like that, um, don't can't quite have the same impact that a fair trade company can because fair trade companies typically work with small producers. So if we're talking about apparel or handicrafts, they're working with women's cooperatives or just small community-based companies to help build up those communities, whereas larger retailers are mainly working in factories. And so that's a s different level to be able to um, really monitor your supply chain. I think it's a lot harder. And so one thing that's pretty cool that I think is cool that Fairtrade has been trying to do is work with Fairtrade USA as a certifier and so they've been trying to certify certain factories to be Fairtrade factories and they've also been trying to do other things such as um, work with cotton growers, basic cotton farmers and to certify them as their products as Fairtrade cotton and so that's 
really good because then larger companies can sort of hook onto that. Larger companies, um, although Patagonia is private, they're larger and they're, they've been able to bring in fair trade product. But the problem is that um, fair trade is really meant for those smaller cooperatives and communities like I mentioned. So there's some controversy there. As far as corporate social responsibility for larger companies, um, I think we've started to see a little bit of progress in those areas now, especially from consumer demand. Um, for example, Nike received some backlash about child labor and things like that on college campuses, so they were kind of kicked off college campuses in a way. Um, however, Nike has turned that around and has been doing really cool things on their website. They've been showing all of their efforts and their reports to become more sustainable or responsible. And so I think one of the key things with CSR departments in different companies is being very transparent. So again, Nike lists all of their factories that they work with. So somebody can say, okay, I see you're working with this factory. I know there's problems in that one. What are you going to do about it? So it's that whole idea of being very genuine and transparent. And I think that speaks a lot to consumers too, because you know, if you're looking for a friend, you don't want somebody who's going to lie to you. And it's kind of the same thing with somebody who's selling a product to you. You want somebody who's going to be honest. Sure. Now, we talked about the kind of micro level and micro outlook of how big companies can contribute to um, a more sustainable and, and a fair um, business method. Mm -hmm. I, I want to kind of um, zone it down to a micro level. And okay. I mean, you have been invested in this in this movement and in this stand. Um, a lot of young generation, a lot of young professionals, young students are also trying to uh, join in as well. So what do you think your role as well as the younger generation's role can be um, in aiding this trend? Yeah, the fair trade movement mm -hmm. or the ideas like that. Yeah. So I think um, for me, I just wanted to make sure that my career, my future career had purpose. And I think that's a trend like you were saying with a lot of people in our generation. And so one thing um, that fair trade does that is really impactful to me is since you are working with smaller communities, um, there's a list of principles really that these fair trade artisans have to work by. And so that includes environmental stewardship, no child labor, being paid fairly and promptly. So the companies working with the artisans have to respect those. Um, and so I think that's really great because not only are you giving these people a chance to sell their products in the Western marketplace or something like that, but you're also, it's unlike charity where you're, it's a one-time giving thing, which charity is great, but fair trade really helps the artisans build up their communities because they can take the money that they're making from their handicrafts or food or whatever it is and um, use the premiums that they get from fair trade certifiers or memberships as well and then turn that back into their community. So that might look like something, that might look like um, putting more money into schools and so when their children are attending those schools they can grow up you know, become doctors, lawyers, whatever they want to be, obviously, and just really give it back to the community in the end. So um, to me, it's a better, globalization has been this idea that, you know, we're going to benefit all these people by giving them jobs, but what's a job worth if it's not really going to help somebody reach their full potential is how I see it. No, I think you put it really nicely, and that's a great point. And finally, wrapping things up, um, you're about to graduate in a few months. I'm sure that's a very exciting journey on its own. Um, <laughs> yep. If you could leave an advice to students who might want to follow your footsteps um, or to young professionals who are interested in the path that you've been taking, what would, an, what would a great recommendation, suggestion you want to leave them with? Yeah. So something that I learned was to not just be an activist, but to really do your research and to understand the challenges that companies might be facing in becoming more socially responsible. So when I came to IU my freshman year, I was really gung-ho about wanting to um, move forward with all these sustainable initiatives. Why can't they do this? Why can't they do that? But there's, you know, there are reasons. There's, they have to meet the bottom line, the demand. And so I think it's a lot about understanding the complexities of business and using those to, um, and using social responsibility to create some efficiencies, whether that's through, you know, saving energy and sustainability, which saves money and things like that. Wonderful. Well, Makara, thank you so much for your time and coming in to speak with us today. Yeah, it was great being here. Wonderful. Mm -hmm.
Now that's all for this edition of Cyber Focus. Thank you for joining us. Now if you have any comments or suggestions for future topics, please let us know at cyber, that's C-I-B-E-R, at indiana.edu. Thank you.